Betty White in Life with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. In number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred in January of last year. There wouldn't have been any incident at all on this particular date if Elizabeth hadn't been in a talkative mood. That's Elizabeth. See how happy she is with her work? She has no idea at all that in a few minutes she's going to drive her husband to distraction because this is one time she doesn't intend to. Elizabeth, how are you tonight? Where's Alvin? He's got a broken arm? He's outside checking for rain? Wait a minute, let's start again. Okay, th that's a book. Oh, he's going to balance the books. Mind if we watch? Thanks. Here he is now. Where are you going, Alvin? Into the den, honey, where it's nice and quiet. I've got a lot of work to do. Why don't you do it right here? Not tonight. We can keep each other company. No, not tonight, honey. I've got to do a lot of figures, columns, and things, and I can't concentrate with you talking. I promise not to talk, honey. Come on, you sit right here. Do you really promise? Sure. Oh, okay. You see, honey, this is work that I should have done at the office. And it has to be finished tonight. Okay, I understand the situation perfectly. I won't talk at all. That's a promise. Thanks, honey. Whew, goodness. Figures. Uh, let's see. It's not in here. 16, 17. The only thing is, I can't see any sense to your being clear out in the other room while I'm in here, especially when we both have work to do. You know, this kind of work takes concentration, too, honey. Then when you take into account the fact that I haven't seen you all day, uh, it doesn't uh, seem... Uh, honey, Elizabeth, you're talking. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you'd started. I've started. <laughs> <clears throat> what are you making, a tent? No, I... <laughs> you and your sense of humor. <laughs> no, it's going to be an apron. Since when do you need 20 yards of material to make an apron? It's for Mama. It's the fit. Uh, well, this is for Mr. Fuddy, and it has to be finished tonight. Alvin, you're talking. Yeah, that's right. Well, no more talk, okay? Okay. okay. Now, let's see. 24, 32, 47, mm -hmm. 95, 5, carry the 9, 16. One four, little, five, two little, six, three little Indians. Four and five and carry the 9. Six little, 46, seven little, eight little Indians. 47, 48 Nine Indians. Nine little, 50, 10 little, 11 little Indians. Indians 97. 13 little, 14 little, 15 little Indians. Elizabeth. Honey, you didn't say anything about singing. Let's draw up a new contract, Elizabeth. No singing and no talking. Okay. No singing, no talking. All right. You want to sign the contract? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 24, 32, 47, 95, 5, carry the 9. That's 6, 5, and carry the 9. Five and carry the nine. Five. <laughs> Twenty-four. Thirty-two. Forty-seven. Ninety-five. Five and carry the nine. 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 What's the matter, honey? Can't the five carry the nine? Elizabeth, you were whistling. Honestly, I didn't realize it, Alvin. All right, new contract. No talking, no singing, and no whistling. Honey, this is important. Mr. Fuddy will kill me if I don't have this finished in the morning. Well, to tell you the truth, Alvin, you're doing more talking than I am. Now, you get back to work, and I promise not to make a sound. Promise? Promise. 24, 32... 47, 95, 5, carry the 9. 5, 6, 35, 5, and carry the 9. Say, say, 32, 47, 49, 5, and carry the 9. 5, and carry the 5, and carry the stupid 9. Honestly, Alvin, sometimes you can be pretty irritating. I can be irritating? What are you talking about? Unless you're trying to drive me out of my mind, will you please have the five carry the nine someplace else? I shall carry both the five and the nine into the den where I should have worked in the first place. Now, wait a minute, honey. Here we go, fighting over nothing. 
Come on, I'll sit down. I'm not going to have you working clear out in the den all by yourself. Now, honey, I'm sorry. But, honey, can't you keep the scissors a little quieter? They must have registered on the seismograph in Pasadena. <laughs> That's cute, honey. You should write. <laughs> I'm trying to. 24, 32, 47. What's a seismograph? I don't know. Maybe six, seven. Seismograph. Yeah, five and carry the nine. Maybe it's a phonograph that's a certain size. You're talking, Elizabeth. Okay, new contract. No talking, no singing, no whistling, no seismograph. Good. <laughs> you want to sign the contract? There. 24, 32, 47, 95, 5, carry the 9. 5, wait a minute, 34, 5, five and carry the 9. 5, and carry the 9. 5, carry the 9. Elizabeth, what are, are you still making that, that on a tent or apron? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the big idea of all of this business? I'm measuring the pocket. <laughs> Sorry, I should know. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Calvin, you're doing yeah. some more talking. Yeah, that's right. 24, 32, 47, 95, carry the 9, 2, 7, 12, 21. Uh -huh. Six, seven, seven, honey, I'm going to have to use the scissors. Okay, honey, I finally finished the one column. 6, 7, 47, 35, 5, 7, 7. you at this point, Elizabeth? You going into the den? Yes. I'll be riding up. No. Good night. Elizabeth. Aren't you ashamed? <laughs> Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred the night they were late for the party. Of course, there's nothing unusual in that. They're always late for everything. But as I recall it, this particular evening, there was a mix-up as to, as, let's see, uh, Elizabeth thought that, no, it was Alvin. Alvin thought, no. Tell you what, let's go see for ourselves. Hurry up, honey, we're late. Be right there. <laughs> Wait till the mayor gets a look at me in this outfit, boy. I'll be right there. I'm talking to myself, dear. I said I'll be right there, Alvin. You don't have to get nasty. Honey, I wasn't talking to you. Okay, I'm sorry, too. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, on behalf of my lovely wife and myself, I... Elizabeth, how do you look? What book? No, honey, I said, how do you look? I want you to look your prettiest tonight. The mayor and his wife will be there. Good. <laughs> hey, what dress are you wearing? The pink? In the desk. What's in the desk? The ink. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman, on behalf of my lovely wife and myself... Alvin! I accept... Yes, dear? Close your eyes. I want to surprise you with my outfit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, no! You like it? What in the world are you wearing? What's the big idea of dressing like that? Well, I'm going to a masquerade. What's your excuse? Elizabeth, if this was another one of your jokes, you've gone too far. Turn around, Alvin. You look like something that just flew back from Capistrano. <laughs> Elizabeth, I don't have the time to be angry with you. Your little funny joke is over. Ha ha. Now go slip into an evening gown and hurry up. We're late. What funny joke is over? Ha ha. You don't expect to go to a reception at City Hall looking like that, do you? Well, of course not. Tonight we're going to a masquerade at Dorothy's house. Honey, that's tomorrow night. Well, the reception's tomorrow night. Elizabeth, I ought to know. The firm is getting a special award from the mayor. I've been rehearsing my speech for a week. What are you going to say? I was going to say, on behalf of my lovely wife, I accept <laughs> this award. But look at you. Take a look. Well, make it... On behalf of my caddy wife and myself. <laughs> and then you can tell when I'm cleaned up, I look pretty good. 
<laughs> Elizabeth, how can you do a thing like this to me? Because I'm absolutely positive that the reception is tomorrow night. You absolutely positive? <laughs> I'm positive anyway. You, you're positive? Well, I'm kind of pretty sure. But are you sure? I better go change. Yeah, well, hurry. Wait a minute. There's one way we can find out. Oh. We'll call Janie. Oh, yes, she'd know what day it is, but hurry up, honey. <laughs> Party line's talking. Now, let's see. Today's the 29th. I'm sure of that. You absolutely sure? No, I'm just kind of certain. Well, I'll get the paper. Sorry. We can't tell from that. Oh. It's yesterday's paper. Look, honey, if the reception is tonight, we're gonna be late. Well, there's nothing we can do till they get off the phone. Well, there's one thing you can do. You can take off that stupid hat. All right, all right. Alvin, there's no use getting angry with them. They have a right to use the phone, too. Well, she got smart with me. She said that I was a listening Tom. <laughs> now, calm down, sweetheart. Let's figure this thing out. Now, the reception's for the 30th, right? Right. All right, now I happen to know that Monday was the 24th. So let's see, that's... <laughs> Everything's all right. Well, that's a relief. How'd you figure it out? This is June the 33rd. <laughs> June the 33rd? No, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, does it? June only has 30 days. But I have four days left over, and that'd make it the 4th of July, but I don't hear any firecrackers. And if I cram the four extra days into June, June will be busting out all over, so I guess I'm all mixed up. Elizabeth, this is no time for jokes. I'd like to use the phone as soon as you're through quacking with your magpie friends. Oh, but you can't talk to people like that. Oh, yes? Well, let's see you get them off the phone. Well, a little common courtesy will do it. Now, watch. No, I wonder if you'd mind very much. <laughs> no, you see, it's rather important. No, Alvin, that's my husband. Will you give me a chance to explain? You don't have to yell. That was smooth. There's no time for sarcasm, Alvin. If we don't find out what day it is, we'll be late for both parties. Look at the time for... Hello. It's the operator. She says we've been using abusive language to the people on the party line. Don't explain it to me. Tell it to her. Uh, hello, operator. Uh, well, what were we supposed to have said? I didn't say that. I said, do you have to yell? She thought I said... Look, I know what she thought you said. <laughs> Ask her what day it is. Uh, uh, operator, could you tell me what day it is? What'd she say? She's connecting me with her supervisor. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You're awfully nice down at the phone company. Well, never mind that. What, what day is today? It's the 29th. Your reception's tomorrow. Come on, honey, let's go to the, the masquerade. Well, honey, I can't go like this. Well, <laughs> you could go as a penguin. Oh, don't be silly, honey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is there a, is there a top hat that goes with that outfit? Sure, right there. Hold it a minute. Oh, Here. honey. <laughs> well, what are we supposed to be? Couple of crazy mixed up kids. You're on, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred during one of those times when Elizabeth had a piano in the house. Uh, Alvin is also in the house. So what are we doing out here? Come on, let's invite ourselves over. All right, honey. Everything's all set. All right. My gosh, honey, what is all this stuff? The toaster, the clock, a bent vase, a couple of broken ones. All set for you to fix. We decided today was going to be fix-it day, remember? Well, I thought I'd fix the sink in the back porch first. 
I didn't know the back porch was sinking. <laughs> oh, brother, this is going to be joke day again, huh? No, it is not. We've got too much to do. What do you want to do first, honey? Do you want to fix the sink or do you want to work on these things? Well, I thought I'd fix the sink first, honey. It's going to take a little time, and I've got to clean out the pipes, you know. See? See what? See me not telling the joke about the pipe cleaner? What pipe cleaner? You want to hear it? Well, there was this fellow, see, and, and he smoked a pipe, and he was also a plumber. Goodbye, Elizabeth. See? No, wait a minute, honey. Look, I've got to get it. Do you mind if I try to fix those things myself? Well, go ahead. What do you need? Let me have this little hammer. So this fella, when he asked his wife to get him some pipe cleaners, she didn't know what kind of pipe cleaners he meant. Yeah, yeah goodbye, Elizabeth. I'll check. No, honey. So she bought him something to gargle. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> you know, honey, no, throat, pipe. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? May I help you? Is it... Calvin? What's the matter? Who's this? I don't even know. He, he just walked in and started changing coats. Where's the piano? What are you going to do, play a concert? No, I came to tune the piano. Thought for a minute you were going to operate. Oh, honey, oh. it's all my fault. For heaven's sake, two weeks ago I called a piano tuner and forgot all about it. You go on back under the sink. It's oh, honey, do I have to crawl, crawl back under that sink? It's hot under there. It's musty. Go back under the sink. Can I fix it? Go on. <laughs> Has he been naughty? No, he just wants to go. The piano's right over there. C sharp. What? C sharp. I do. I, I hardly ever wear my reading glasses. No, no, I mean your bracelet. You see, when you shook your wrist, the predominant tone was C-sharp. With overtones, of course. Oh, of course. You see, I, I have perfect pitch. You could probably make a fortune playing baseball. No, I don't think you understand. You see, I have a tone in my head, and I can tell when... Wait a minute. What's the matter with me? You mean you can tell what a tone is when you hear it? Yeah. I've always wanted... Excuse me, just a minute. Don't go away. I want to... What's that? Easy. <laughs> What's that? F sharp. Ah. A flat. <laughs> well, I've never had any lessons. <laughs> that was a joke. I make these always. That, see, you said flat. And, and I... <clears throat> it was extremely humorous. <laughs> I mean, the light was bad out there, and I couldn't find my little wrench. Alvin, this man has perfect pitch. Oh, wonderful. What team is he on? <laughs> no, you don't understand. You don't understand. A flat, C, B, D, A. <laughs> F, A flat, G, D. S. S. <laughs> D. Listen, Buster, I don't know what you're spelling, but I'll tell you it Alvin. isn't funny. It may interest you to know that this entire toolbox is out of tune. Really? <laughs> Except the hacksaw. Isn't that good to know, sweetheart? Elizabeth, if you need me, I'll be under the sink. Hacksaw. <laughs> Has he been naughty? Isn't he cute? No. The, pia the piano's right over there. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Will I bother you if I work on these things while you're doing that? The piano's locked. Do you have a key? There are 88 keys inside. <laughs> the piano key. It was a... a <clears throat> I once belonged to a fish quartet. What? It's a funny, like yours. You're, you're supposed to ask me, what is a fish quartet? What is a fish quartet? A first tuna, second tuna, third barracuda, and fourth bath. <laughs> barracuda, baritone. Isn't that charming? <laughs> Fine. I must ask that we cease all conversation while I'm working. The least little thing throws me off. I won't say a word. Face is a half tone flat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Throws me off. I, I, I'll work on the toaster. Like this. Was it a hold on? No. I, look, nothing can happen now. Temperamental, but when I can't do a piano, I can't do a piano. 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 I can't do a let us come on by and see you again, will you? And until next time, once more, goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm.